Hey queens, shout out to my king Sue. Welcome back to the View of the Rain. My name is Sally Mato. You can call me Sally. Whoever floats your boat. So, first off, Ramadan Mubarak to everyone who celebrates all of my Muslims out there. Ramadan Mubarak. I hope that your first few days of Ramadan have been amazing. So this year I will be doing kind of like a sort of Ramadan thing that I usually do every year. Y'all know to post every day because it's just too much going on for, for that. But I will post as much as I can. I saw that some people said that they want some cooking videos. So they will be coming. I recorded one yesterday. Um, and then today I am going to attempt to record one as well. I am going to record a cooking video tomorrow so i'm gonna be making some achage and fish and like a little sauce that goes with it that's like kind of like an african dish and then i'll show y'all how i do it this actually will be my first time making it by myself because i usually make it with my mom but we'll see how that goes but yeah so i'm on my way to philly right now to go to my mom's house she bought the fish and i'll check it for me because where i live there are like no african shops like that around here so i'm gonna go grab that for my mom i'm gonna go to the islamic store to buy me a quran i saw this cool website that had qurans and they were like colorful qurans and they had the english translation transliteration and all of that i wanted to buy that but i kind of want it now <laughs> so i'm gonna go to the islamic store and get one i have like those mini qurans but i want like a full like like Come on. Let's go to the Islamic store. I'm gonna buy some jobabs too. But yeah, expect the video of like um, some Islamic wear, like jobabs and abayas, real soon. I ordered a few from AliExpress, and then I got some from the Islamic store as well. So yeah, just a lot of talking. Let's just go. <laughs> hey y'all so i just got out of the islamic store i try to get like little clips um of the store so y'all can see what it looks like but bruh it was so packed in there as you can imagine um but i love that store it's um it's called toba islamic fashion i believe and it's on 52nd and walnut so if you're in philly you want to check them out they have amazing stuff in there they have a whole bunch of book selections they got like all the bias and Joe Bob's everything that you could possibly want like Islamically I feel like if you're searching for it I got the most beautiful Quran I'm gonna show it to y'all a little bit later and I'll show y'all the two Joe Bob's that I got and I got in a buyer as well I wanted to get a third Joe Bob but I'm like let me let me slow down a little bit so I may come back for for the red one I got the pink one which was the last one alhamdulillah Cause that's the one i came for so alhamdulillah i got the pink one beautiful pink like kind of like a powder pink type of color and then i also got a black one you know you can't go wrong with black so let's go ahead i'm gonna go to my parents house go grab this fish and i'll check it and head back home so that i can make iftar so let's go hey y'all i feel like this has been a car vlog for real but i just came from my parents house and you know you always gotta cop up after you can be parents house that's like my fish and i should get it's dripping so i put it in a trash bag and then i got like some jimbere in there which is like a um it's a lemon and ginger drink malia lemon and ginger drink and then i just got some of my buys and stuff that i'll show y'all a little bit later in a different video and i got a comforter set <laughs> mama's always coming through i swear but i'm about to head home because it is currently it's 6 30 and iftar is at 7 37 or something like that so i'm gonna head home and i'll talk to y'all when i get there so we can get out of the car yo tell me why my dad just came out screaming my name before i pulled off and he was like my two my two not my side like <laughs> i can't you gotta love parents i swear all right y'all for real by this time hey y'all so i'm finally out of the car <laughs> it is the next day and i am currently working i'm working from home I am almost done with the work day. It's 1.56 and I'm off at 2.30. So I have to just do a few phone calls. I just got off a session with some of my students. I just did a group session. If you don't know, I'm a school counselor. So I have like, you know, counseling sessions with kids and oh gosh, just a mess. Hold on, let me set y'all up.
Okay, so if you don't know, I'm a school counselor. Um, so I just got off a session with a few of my kids. I'm currently working from home for the next like week and a half, but I'll be back in the building very soon. But you know, I'm just finishing up my work day. And then as you can hear, I don't know if it's very loud, but I have on like a washing machine in the background and doing laundry. So I definitely wanted to show y'all the stuff that I got yesterday, but I'm gonna finish off my work day real quick. Then I'm gonna come back and show y'all the things that I got from the Islamic store. So stay tuned. Hey y'all, so I just showered and I'm doing a face mask right now. This is like one of my favorite face masks. It's by Glam Glow and it's their Super Mud face mask. And it's kind of like a spot treatment. And what I usually do is just put it on like problem areas so I don't necessarily put it all over my face. Sometimes I will just like put it just on like one pimple and then call it a day. But today I just decided to put it everywhere kind of. Um, but I've had this on for probably like 40 minutes now so i'm gonna go wash it off and then i'm gonna show y'all what i got from the islamic store so stay tuned for the video for my coco Khan sunscreen i had a video up on this already however i found out that i was not using the appropriate amount of product so i used the appropriate amount of product and this is kind of like the end result of it um that video will be coming soon after this video so be sure to check it out but now i wanted to show y'all what i got from the islamic store so let's get into it so the first thing, let's start off with the books. First off, I got this 40 Hadith book. And basically it has the Arabic and the Arabic on one side and then it has the English on the other side and then it basically goes through all of the Hadith. Um, I read this this morning and it was great. I think I read the first two of them and yeah. That's basically what this book is here. And lastly, the last book that I got was the Quran that I told you I was going to get. This one is so beautiful. Like, mashallah. So beautiful. Um, so this one is the English translation one. And let me see if I can flip to one of the pages. This is what the inside of it looks like. So on one side, there's the Arabic. On the other side, there's the English translation. And I'm still here for it. Got my Quran now. I got like the full size. I told y'all in the beginning of this video, I only had like the, the small um, like parts of the Quran. So you gotta kind of need to like put it together. So I just wanted to get like a full Quran. And I'm glad that I was able to find this beautiful one. Okay, next I got this baya and it's like it looks brown on the camera but i think it's more like an olive green type of color but for some reason it looks brown on the camera so this is what it looks like i got it in the size 56 but i feel like i should have got it in the size 58 because my legs are kind of long um but this is definitely a good thing to pray in so i don't know if y'all can see but this is what it looks like. So this, if y'all want to know the prices, this was $30. And then I got the pink Jobab I was telling y'all about. So I freaking love their Jobabs there. Um, the quality is good. The material is nice and silky. It's lightweight. So it'll be great for the springtime and the summer. And yeah, I just love it a lot. So this one is a three piece, I believe. And this was $45. So the way that it works is, well, it was $45 and then it was two for $80. So I bought two of them. I have the pink one and as you can see back there, I have the black one. So the way it works is you go ahead and flip this up and then you turn it up onto your forehead and then there's two ties in the back and you tie it on the back i'm gonna have another video where i am actually trying these on so stay tuned for that video but i'll show y'all what this looks like so this is what it looks like it's a one size fits all and it fits nicely um but one thing that i will say is i also wore a blue one very recently and the neck of it is really wide whereas this one is very snug so 
I don't know how it's a one size fit all, but they're different. Um, but yeah, so take that into consideration if you do decide to go cop one of these. But there's this top part, and then there's a skirt that comes with it. And that's what it looks like. And then the last piece to it is like the niqab piece. And that's this part right here. So if you wanted to have it like a face mask, or any cob, you can go ahead and throw this piece onto it too. And then it has like, goodness, I think it's everywhere. And then it has like the little eye slits. So if you wanted to do that, there's that. So there's that pink one. And then it's just the same thing, but here in black. And then I also have a navy blue one as well, which is in the dryer. So those are all the things that I got from the Islamic store. I feel like I've been talking about showing it to y'all for the whole video, but finally here it is. Um, I'm about to go on a walk and then come back for iftar. So I will see y'all then. You know, honestly, I wanted to just kind of leave everyone with some practical tips because Allah tells us in the Quran that those who seek huda, guidance, will be guided. Here's the thing. If you want to change, Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah, he says something beautiful. He says, إِذَا الْمَرْءُ كَانَتْ لَهُ فِكْرَةً فَفِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ لَهُ عِبْرَةً When a person is really deeply involved in some sort of thought, when something is, is heavy on his mind, heavy on his heart, then everything around him will be a guide towards that thing. You love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything around you has meaning all of a sudden. Every single thing. You really have a sense of urgency, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show you the way to change. Because you know what, at the end of the day, it's different for everybody. All of us have our different demons. And every single problem has its specific solution. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who guides you to that. As Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah said, Rahimallahu imra an shagalatu ayubuhu an ayub al nas. May Allah have mercy on a person who is too busy with his own faults to be worried about anybody else's faults. A sense of urgency. So I just typed up five things. These are five tips if you want to take notes. The first one, eliminate the poisons in your life that aren't allowing you to change. And essentially what that teaches us is that the Prophet wasallam, he taught us about this heart, this qalb. Imam al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says what? Your qalb is a space. You fill it up with, you fill it up with anything else, you're not, going be, you're not going to have any space for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in there. The problem is not the qiyam. The problem is that you're doing the things that will stop your qiyam from being accepted. The problem is not your dua. The problem is what you do after dua and before dua. That's the problem that you're having. Eliminate the stains from your life and then you would find that you naturally would start to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because once your heart becomes clean and honest, your heart starts naturally inclining towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your fitrah is to incline towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So eliminate the things that corrupt your fitrah. Number two, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. You know, some people subhanAllah, they wait for really, really, really bad things to happen. They wait to see the consequences of their sins before they change those things. An ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. What happens is that shaitan claws you, he digs you into this hole, or you dig yourself into this hole. It's a lot harder, harder to climb out of that hole than to have taken care of it in the first place. Put aside the flaws you already have, don't go any further. And Imam Al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says that every single action that you commit, every single sin that you commit goes through the following stages. Number one, it's a fatrah, passing thoughts. Number two, after it's a passing thought, it becomes a fikrah, settled thought. You start thinking about it. Hey, what about that? After I've entertained the thought enough, shaitan has told me about how great the benefits of this action are going to be. And essentially, we commit sin because we think that it's going to serve some sort of benefit to us. We think it's going to give us some sort of pleasure. And it usually does for a temporary time. Then it becomes a niyyah. I have the intention to commit that sin. After I have the niyyah, the intention to commit that sin, once I've made the intention to commit something, nothing's gonna stop me. Then it becomes azimah. I'm determined to commit that sin. No matter what stops me. Right, at first I was very hesitant. Now I'm full force. And that's why once you have azimah, it becomes amal. It surfaced, it became action. 
Once it becomes action, it becomes adah, becomes a bad habit. Once you have a systemized sin in your life, trust me, that will kill your dua, that will kill your salah, that will kill your, your opportunity to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why from the dua that we, that we make, Allahumma naqina min al-dhunubi wal khataya allati takbisu dua wa naqina min al-dhunubi wal khataya allati tanzilu al-bala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify us from the sins and from the mistakes that cause our du'as to be cut off and that cause the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to descend upon us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa tells us that at one point you become defined by your sin. Just like at one point you become defined by your good deed. In Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that a person would tell the truth so much, he would be so truthful, hatta yuktab Allah siddiqah. Till he's written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a Siddiq. Not that he told the truth one time. This is a truthful person. This is someone who's truthful in his faith. And then a person would lie so much, not that he told the lie here or there, until he's written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a kathab. Your name with Allah is a liar. Subhanallah. You become defined by your traits. You become defined by your deeds. Number three. Anyone ever heard of the acronym KISS? Keep it simple, Sunnah. Keep it simple sunnah. We can all agree upon that. Rasulullah tells us that when a person goes to his grave, but when you go to your grave, what are the things that you're praying for? What are the things that you miss? What do you really want? He would come back and wish he could just offer two rakas. Just two more rakas. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might forgive him with those two rakas. Find something small in your life that you're capable of doing and stick with it. Eventually that will accumulate. Eventually that might be the cause of you entering into Jannah. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, what is Aisha radiallahu anha narrated? That the most beloved actions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adwamuha and qalla. You know, the most consistent of them, even if they're very, very, very small.